I have been canning so much. It is August 1st, 2022. I started canning July 7th, 2022. I have canned over 200 jars. Some things did not turn out and had to be dumped. It's fine. Um... I cleared out my little freezer. I took dried beans and canned those. Well, I back up. What I mean by clear out the freezer, anything that could be canned that I thought we would eat, I canned. And then I started digging deeper, deeper into food preservation. Then I started dehydrating to see how that went. I had a lot of potatoes and onions. And I thought, well, we could eat dehydrated potatoes. And I cook with dehydrated onions. I buy dry onions all the time. So that went successfully with uh, russet potatoes and these uh, little yellow onions. And then I bought some yellow onions and dehydrated those. I tried to dehydrate yellow potatoes, did not like the end product, so uh, stop that. I don't have a fancy dehydrating machine, I have a fancy stove oven that uh, we got two years ago, it's five burner gas, and it has a dehydration function that I'd never used before, so I thought try it. It's the worst that could happen. That and dry, then put it in something in a jar. Right? Well, it worked. Except for that last round of yellow potatoes. Those did not get dehydrated. Those got canned. We live on a tight budget. One of us works. I am disabled. I have a neurological disorder. I have relapses. I've been wheelchair bound. I've been chained to a seated walker. I've been chained to a cane. And then, like right now, no assistive devices. I've got many doctors and many medications that keep me functioning, but relapses still happen at any time. Our deep freezer died a year ago. It's old. It's from Sears. Can't get replacement parts. Couldn't afford to have it hauled away. So it just sat in our little eat-in kitchen, empty, with stuff on top of it, like uh, boxes of sugar-free jello, boxes of fruit cups from, you know, from Sam's Club, uh, a basket of popcorn seasoning, and then all the trays to my air fryer. And that's all it was. And then I started canning. And I thought, okay, I don't have any space to really store these jars. And I thought, that's empty space. That's empty shelving. Took off the door, took the gasket off the door, threw it away, bleached the whole thing because sitting for a year, condensation had built up started to get kind of musty, moldy, funky smell. So I bleached it out, bleached the door. There's space beside it and a wall that leads to our laundry room. So I slid the door between the freezer and the wall and laid uh, the gripper kind of shelf liners on the shelves and started putting jars in there. It worked out great. Great. Then uh, filled up the door with jars. Now, I went to Facebook and to yard sales to get canning supplies. I got about $800 worth of stuff for $95. That includes jars, lids, rings, 
um, a pressure canner, a water canner. What else? That's about it. I bought brand new the, the canning funnel, the canning tongs, the debubbler. I will admit, when I first opened that box, I had no idea what the hell a debubbler was and what the heck to do with it. But luckily, there's YouTube. So I stayed busy. And it helped. It, helped. it has helped a lot because July is rough. July 14th, 2018, my oldest son passed away. After only a few days in hospice, he passed away at home um, early that morning. July 27th is his birthday. He passed away 13 days before his 16th birthday. He would have been 20 this year. To get through July, I have to stay busy. Because while I grieve, I also have to help my youngest, my only surviving child, to grieve, to help him process his feelings. He's autistic. And he feels things so deeply and it's hard for him to process that so I do allow myself to grieve don't get that wrong but I'm still a mom I have to help him grieve for his brother and help him process his feelings he is also recently diagnosed type 1 diabetic. He's on an insulin pump and a CGM constant glucose monitor. That's what that stands for. That's been rough on him. Uh, shortly after that diagnosis, he got the Hashimoto's thyroiditis diagnosis. His thyroid function is still not under control. That affects his diabetes. Let me tell you, diabetes really affects the autism those highs and those lows those wild swings really affects the autism so we're doing our best to keep that in range as much as possible we're learning which foods trigger highs which foods trigger highs to stay high too long we're learning what foods keep him in range and what foods make him drop low it's not even been a year since diagnosis so we and he's not hit puberty he's 11 so it's all gonna change <clears throat> i may just start recording i guess my experiences with the home canning because I'm finding that I love it. I kind of helped my mom, my grandma, my great grandma when I was a kid, but if my job was mainly to prep the food, to help prep the food, not the actual canning, because I think the last time they forced me to help prep, I was like nine or 10. So that was like 30 years ago. Not much I remember about actual canning books I've read, there's many YouTubers I'm following right now. I'm thinking in the long run with the way the food prices are going, this is going to help sustain our little family since we are a one income family. If I could work, I would <laughs> at any moment. I'm knocked down back into physical therapy, back into occupational therapy months years before excuse me I'm up and doing this again 
don't know. That's the fun, fun world of a, of a progressive neurological disorder that's rare and they don't understand a lot about. There's no treatment for it. There's only treatment for its symptoms and everybody's symptoms are different. No two people are alike. Like with a lot of health issues, like my son's diabetes is not like anybody else's diabetes. My oldest son died from shaken baby syndrome. He was shaken as an infant by his biological father. He suffered his whole life. Smiled and laughed nearly every day. He didn't know any different. See him behind me there. That would be, that'd be my baby. My, my firstborn, my Georgie. And then I have my little Logan. And then with that, we have my sweetheart, my owl. He's my sweetheart. I don't know how I'd get through what I what I've gotten through without without him. And he supports me in every crazy thing I do. Every every crazy thing I want to try. When it came to the home canning, he supported me. Go get what you need. Do what you want to do. Don't overdo it. <laughs> he doesn't like to see me suffer. <laughs> uh, just like I wouldn't like to see him suffer. So, um, yeah, I'm going to start hoarding because I'm such a newbie and I've already made mistakes. And um, mistakes are good to show people. At least I think it is. I like to see the not so perfect, the not so wonderful, because that's life is not perfect. Life is not always wonderful. Life can be hard. I'm planning and plotting what I'm gonna can in August, but I currently have a hundred and eighty six. What's my spreadsheet say? I don't know where my spreadsheet went. 186 jars. Uh, canned up. Uh, today we're going to try a recipe that I tried out of this book. That the lady I got my pressure canner from gave to me for free. I thought that was so sweet of her. Little old lady. I mean, I got everything from little old ladies. They were just done canning it. Currently on my shelf, check this out, since July 7th, we have meat sauce, sweet and spicy pickled grapes, sliced potatoes, whole baby potatoes, ground beef, ugly beef, ugly pork, ugly chicken, pretty chicken, lemon balm jelly, green grape pineapple strawberry jelly, green grape jelly, nectarine jam, watermelon jelly, lily syrup, pickled hot Hungarian hot peppers, au jus, cinnamon maple glazed carrots, Dijon chicken meal starter, mixed fruit jam, bone broth, caramel apple pie jam, meatballs, pineapple, uh, chicken a la king meal starter, chicken cacciatore meal starter, zesty pickles, chunky mustard, spicy pickled little smokies with radishes. I keep those in the fridge. They are not approved. If you know anything about canning, you know what I mean by that. A goulash meal starter that came from the cookbook. We're going to have that today and see if we like it. Uh, navy beans, pinto beans, and mandarin orange jam. That's currently everything on the shelves. I have dumped two rounds of pickled watermelon rinds. I don't know if it's the watermelon I got, but it really soaked up the salt. Inedible. And then um, plums turned out inedible. Dumped those silly little things too. 
So for August, I have already planned to can ugly chicken, chicken paprikish meal starter, paprikish, uh, pasta visual soup, ground beef, orange jam, and ground, ground sausage. Next video. See you there.